Well, how y'all are this afternoon? This is your buddy George Jones over at our Bergen Gun Range with my next installment on and move that camera back and give us a little wider field of view. Thank you very much. And with this installment of move that camera back and give us a little wider field of view, we're going to talk about my favorite 32 or my favorite 380 automatic, which is this. The Bursa Thunder 380. The Bursa Thunder 380 is a pretty neat gun. I like it. I've had it for some time. I've shot it a lot. It's uh, pretty much my regular carry gun. Things may be changing. Um, we got this. The Gerson, uh, what's it called? MC14T, which is a licensed copy of the Beretta uh, 86 in caliber 380. Uh, we've been looking at this gun. I haven't shot it yet. We fired it over, Ed fired it over a minute ago just to make good and sure that it would work. And um, he likes it, and I'm fixing to shoot it here at 10 yards and see how I like it. So it's got an extended dust cover down here on it where the Beretta didn't have. It has three Picatinny cuts in it, so you can mount something on it if you want to. Uh, I don't know what that would be. One of them newfangled cup coffee makers or something that might enhance your relationship with your wife or something. I don't know. Whatever you take a notion you want to put on there. Uh, light would be the obvious choice. Okay. It has ambidextrous safety, which works whether it's cocked or not, but it does not have decocker. It has the slide releases over here, and this is a tip-up tip-up barrel arrangement just like on the original Beretta. I think the Beretta 380s and 32s had the tip-up barrel. Of course 25s and 22s do also. Um, we're going to talk more about that later. It has uh, mono magazine release only on one side. Easy to get out with your thumb. It doesn't have a dingus on the trigger. It's a conventional safety gun. It's cocked, you've got it on safe. It ain't cocked and you still got it on safe, whether you like it or not. It has that stuff that they call G10 so often, which is actually, um, oh, what do we used to call it? Anyway, it's fiberglass and fiberglass resin and fabric. What's it called? Like Micarta? Micarta. Similar to Micarta. That's it. It's McCarthy. It's that McCarthy material. And it's got a design in it that makes it look, and I don't know, it feels pretty good in the hand. It has a grooved back strap, a grooved front strap, and it has a, a lanyard ring on the bottom of the mainspring housing. Uh, and tip-up barrel. Give me a bullet, will you? I'll take one out of the magazine, but you, the tip-up barrel, you don't have to rack it. So, it's a tip-up. So you just hit this guy, put your one in there. Now one of the things you notice about this is it doesn't have a cut for an extractor. It's got a straight blowback. It's not uh, delayed blowback or has any locking mechanism to it. It's straight blowback, just like a Raven 25, so it doesn't use an extractor. It just uses an ejector. All right, now the gun's loaded, see? No, 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 this nonsense. It has a 13 round magazine. 13 round magazine, and this one is Megar. But it takes a Beretta mag. So the magazine is not proprietary. You can actually get a high-capacity 380 
magazine, I don't know what the model would be, Beretta mag, and put it in the gear sun. So, with all that being said, uh, let's try some fire rotation. Let's shoot a fight and see what happens. So it's like a single action automatic. You've got a, well, you have to cock it the first time. You're on safe. The gun's not cocked. Okay, trigger's in neutral. So to get out of this, you can pull it all the way through or you can cock it the first time. Uh, let's just pull it all the way through on the first shot. We've got a target up down there at 10 yards that I've tried to patch up. Targets are getting hard to find. Let's see how we do at 10. I completely missed it. Long, creepy trigger pull. All right, let's try a little target reset. All right. I'm bad off to the left, as usual, so I'll aim for the fire plug three blocks down the street. There we go. I get used to the creepy trigger and all of a sudden it shoots a lot better. It has a fairly long reset and then even from reset it has a long creep back to the point where it's going to fire. So it's kind of a, it's got kind of a creepy trigger, weird. It's like, okay, you finally get back to the point where it'll fire and then you let go, it goes back to reset, but then instead of it being right there from reset back, you go to creeping back again until you finally get to the discharge point, you know. Uh, hand me a box of shells over here. Drops, mag drops nice and clean, that's handy. Uh, I don't have my reloading device with me today. I come over here to do a completely different video and Ed showed up with this. So now I'm reviewing it. Let's see if we can get it galadened here without killing ourselves. Magazine lips are kind of sharp right there at that point. How many did I actually put in the black down there? Nine. Nine? How many did it have in it? Fourteen. That's about a little bit better, a little bit better than 50 percent, uh, 50 percent. Never shot before. Yeah, it's first time. And is a, initially the trigger is creepier than a G2C. How, how smooth is the firing? Part. Once you find it, it's not too bad. You know, it, it but it's an Easter egg. like a 380. Yeah, it's like an Easter egg hunt trying to. When you go forward to reset, you think, well, it's supposed to be right there when you come back off on the reset. It's not. But it's not. You have to go back there and hunt for it. You know. We ain't going to Pan Camp Perry with it. No. But on the other hand, it fired and cycled every time. All right, I got 10 in this thing. Let's give it another try. Now that it's back, you can run one back up in it and then just drop the slide in the conventional manner. It's, it's a little creepy, to tell you the truth. Uh, you know, I used to have a Puma, and it was its better than that, you know. All right, let's try this again.
Well, that's a little better. That's all tan. That was all tan in the black. Yeah. That second ten shot string looks a lot better. You know. So I fired. What I have in the first time? Nine. Fourteen. I mean, I had, what I have in the target first time? Nine. nine and this was ten. I didn't okay, tell you. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Some nine, nine and nine, but. Yeah. Ninety, ninety something percent on the second one. Yeah, so. Like I always said, when you pick one, that's the one you shoot all the time, because the more you shoot, the better you're going to be with it. You know, I know guys that can't conceal carry. Well, hell, they got a different gun every week. You know, and they'll go buy a gun for concealed or constitutional carry. They'll shoot it that weekend. They'll take it back. Next week, they'll have a different gun. And don't understand why they're such a lousy shot. Well, because it takes time to build up dope. Is that a bullet hole in the t in the bench? Here, sure is. Yeah, there's a skid mark. A skid mark, or somebody is down there and run. Might have an AD. Like I said, if you want to see, ranges are supposed to be havens for honest and correct thinking, safe people. Oh, well, if you want to be disappointed. Put a trail cam on a gun range. Well, getting back to it, uh, my opinion. <laughs> my opinion. The uh, Garcon MC14T. Um, it's pretty acceptable. Uh, I don't know what the money looks like on this thing. But uh, it's around four, four and a half or five fingers. Uh, if a boy had the budget to put two or three boxes of 380s through it, sit down and really practice on it, I think it'd be all right. You know, if I had the money to put three or four boxes of 380s through this one, a borrowed gun, uh, you know, I think in the long run you'd be okay. Um, now, the recoil parameters on this gun are nice. It's a comfy gun to shoot, okay? The grips are cut out in such a way that you can access your controls easily. Um, the, the grips, the micarta grips are nicely textured. Uh, the width of the gun, both side to side and front to back, are just about right for me. How does the weight feel? It's a little front heavy. Because George and I were talking, I said, now this is supposedly like an alloy frame. It does not feel like an alloy frame. It feels more like a steel frame. Yeah. It's right. It's, it's a, a pound and a half unloaded. Well, first of all, it's longer than what you would expect to see feel in a 380 automatic, okay? It's it's quite a bit longer than say that's a the four, Bursa, four inch barrel. You know the Bursa is like a three and a quarter or whatever. This is a four inch barrel with this large trunnion out here on the front of it to give it strength. Uh, you know it has this cross bolt mechanism in here. Um, you know it has some weight to it. And of course there's more here than there normally is on the mm -hmm. dust cover course, I mentioned mounting with, rail. With a four inch barrel, you're getting all you can get out of a 380, so that's nice. Yeah. Overall, pretty good gun. Uh, I think it's worth the money. If you don't mind a little bit bigger gun for concealed carry, uh, this would be a good one. This would be a good rudimentary gun to have around the house that anybody in the family of his age could use it. Uh, like that. And it has a alloy frame and, and so forth. And it's just, yeah, it's good. I like it. It's okay. 
Well, that's about the size of it for this installment on eight. I got this relatively new gun. Like a tape, share if I commentate and some scribble. Leave me old dollar on the Patreon bucket on the way out the door if you want to. And well, if you don't, I'll keep right on making content for you. You know, as Tom Bodette used to say, towels are a little scratchy. We got no Wi-Fi. <laughs> I think there's a body in the room down the hall. <laughs> God bless America, join the NRA, and God bless us each and every one. We need both of them's help. We'll see y'all. <clears throat> Everything else, though, guys, so fucking heavy. this thing is. He's got his Uzi. It's got a Belgian wooden stock on it. So, cheek on that stock, it's like putting your cheek on the stock of a well-made when you put your cheek well on it. Cheek on it. Oh my God. You come over and shoot his. Okay. Well, what about work? Right this one. I'm going to from a gun on one of the mag. Easy to win from Mauser. You know how it works? He probably put safety pulled. on. Bent okay. bolts. He inserts it here. He normally sticks it on the right. right. We got this on the top bar. You have to keep it pressing here. Finger on the trigger. Fire. Bracket. bracket. Let it fly home. Okay. Yeah, keep grip safety on it. Have to push on the grip. Well, this got the strip bolt. Okay, so I have to pull this back. Put it back yeah. and then let go. Is this the right way to hold it? Name. Just name through the hole like you did with a grease gun. Uh, I know, Nick. Much of a kick on it? No, it has almost no kick. I'll just, uh, Silly thing. oh, I'll just making sure it's recording nice. It is. There you go. Okay. Wait, want me to shoot the same time he's shooting? When you guys are ready, just take it away. You just have to cock it. Okay, so, go, go. Nope. Back, right? Okay, yeah, I'm just going to squeeze in. All the way back, then release it.
Matters. No, no, no.